Hi folks, welcome back. Happy eclipse season. Thank you so much for being here. And before I even do anything else, I just want to thank you because last night I hit 100 subscribers and I hesitated to say anything yet because a lot of times people will subscribe and then unsubscribe. So you might hit 100 followers and then go back down to 97. That happened on my Instagram as well where I just finally hit 200 subscribers for sure in a solid way and it literally took probably a good year for me to maintain 200 followers on Instagram. I kept getting a lot of those people who will follow but then if you don't follow right back they'll eventually just leave and I'm glad I started out on Instagram because it helped me build my confidence towards doing this and I at the time never really thought I would even start a YouTube channel because the field seemed so crowded to me on YouTube but it's been a really great platform for me so far like I made it out to a hundred people subscribing like within a fraction of the time that happened on Instagram so it really tells you a lot about what's gone down on Instagram and why I personally haven't decided to join threads as well because it's just all algorithmic bullshit in a lot of ways. I used to love Instagram for all of its image related content and now it's just you have to advertise if you want your posts to have any reach and I kept hearing that from other people who've been on that platform doing this kind of work for a long time but I now have lived it. I poured a lot of work into pick a card reels where I would spend hours in a day getting them ready doing like gif and image collage work combined with text to make these really great readings for people and then they would get like six views <laughs> and I would put in hours on those so it's like yeah I don't know if that's the right place for me so I'm glad that I got kind of pushed out of the nest and I really thank you for subscribing here I really do thank you I know there's thousands of us on this platform and it means something to me that you have landed here and subscribed. So I really want to thank you. And this is just going to be a general reading today for eclipse season. Just a general collective message. We'll see what comes out. Um, and then I'll be back tomorrow to do the um, total eclipse mirror gaze that I've been doing on the cycles of the moon. So that'll be uploaded probably tomorrow evening as well. So let's just get to it. This is just going to be a general layout for people. It's going to be helpful for us to know as we go through now here in less, I think it's less than 48 hours away, roughly, this total solar eclipse in Aries. I have a dear friend who is Celilo, and she told me back after the first total eclipse we had here in the Americas, it's going to be going on seven years ago now, she told me at that time that she had a vision that some crazy things would be happening once this now upcoming total eclipse is going to go down. And it's interesting, to, I've, it's always stayed with me and I've watched and kind of waited and there was just that earthquake in New York. So I, it's interesting that um, my friend had that vision and I, I'm wondering how she's feeling about it. I should ask her. Anyways, let's figure out what's a general message for us. What's something we should be aware of right now as we complete this eclipse season upon us, a completion as well as we're in a Mercury retrograde, I think. What's helpful? What's going to be helpful for us to know? So that's interesting. We've got the um, Six of Pentacles on the bottom. So that leads me to believe that we're coming into a place of maybe a little bit more harmony in the Earth plane, a little bit more of an equal balance of give and take in the 3D in terms of energy resources this is a balance of distribution of this type of material stuff like food shelter clothing things in the material world that that keep us safe and whole as as people having this human experience right so things coming into balance that's nice to see especially if you've been feeling 
a little bit off kilter or out of whack with this eclipse energy. Um, it's going to be really a nice break or a nice recalibration after a lot of chaos. These often, my card layouts end up being on a personal level. And then my obsidian mirror scrying sessions have been kind of leaning more towards collective messages. These are collective too. It may just be the way that I read that I these boil into personal messages. But let's just see what comes out here because I'm open to collective messages about society and stuff as well too, right? That's often was the role of a card reader was to make predictions about society for for rulers and for leaders right there's a card reader in france i'm blanking on her name right now but i made a little reel about her and she was kept company with alexandre dumas um napoleon and josephine she read cards for she, Le, marie le normand the le normand deck is named after her even though that's not a deck that she used so go you should subscribe to my instagram there's a lot of really cool content on there i create less on there because I got discouraged at some point, but um, maybe I'll try to find a way to share that reel here because it's a cute little informative reel about her and her life. And you can visit her grave site in Paris, um, which is kind of cool too. I would love to see someday. She had the re respect of world leaders and Alexandre Dumas memorialized her in his writing. So she had a lot of impact in her work. So now the cornerstone for you, the cornerstone energy in this eclipse season is, is the Queen of Swords. So you've really recognized things in my life are coming to an end that are no longer for me. This really seems to be mostly what I'm feeling is in relationships, but it could be anything. She's a boundary setter and a cord cutter, the Queen of Swords. And she may also be like, you might've just broken up and had like, gone through a divorce or are going to go through a divorce. This might be eclipse season might have the impact on you of helping you recognize it's really time. It's time for me to end this relationship or this circumstance or this job. I just resigned from a job that was miserable for me, but I kept trying to hang in there because of a couple different reasons. One, it was a little bit of a predictable income compared to my own practice, which is hit and miss when I submit my own claims for being a talk therapist versus working for an employer. But the setting was so bad for me and my emotions, even though it was just one day a week, I finally thought I can't keep trading this minor feeling of security for how much I'm impacted when I'm here every day. It's a toxic work culture. I don't like it. So it's been an immense relief. I was in that queen of swords energy to put in my resignation. I just don't care anymore about what kind of nerves it's going to put me into to make sure I have a stable income. It's just wasn't the price was too high to keep working there. So and you know that you're coming into a really fortuitous time where you're going to have a lot of options. There is potential for people around you to not like what they see because they're jealous or they're envious or they want what you have. So it might be just a sideline hater, right? Somebody that's like, hey, I, I'm, you know, I, I'm not, I wanted to do that. Now look, what she, I mean, it's just a hater. Somebody watching your success possibly and hating on it or feeling jealous and why can't I have that or what, you know, whatever. There's that kind of energy present here. This could also be you getting away under the radar with some really great stuff that's going to be bringing you into this Wheel of Fortune energy. So we'll see. Like you might be, a little overwhelmed with the way that your mind is blown with your good fortune and all these choices that are coming in and you're going to make the stealth move that gets you laughing all the way to the bank. That's another way of looking at the seven of swords. So we'll see if it's if we need to, if it means somebody negative around you or that you are just going to be succeeding. Um, your vulnerabilities are that you're having trouble keeping your hope up at times. You've been recognizing you need to make all these changes and all these cuts to your kind of relationships that maybe haven't been very uplifting for you or that have actually caused you hurt or even just that they're in the past. There, Some relationships are only in our life for a time, right? And we're not meant to stay connected to them forever. But something about making all these changes 
even though part of you might know that there's all these good things coming for you, you might not see it yet and you're having trouble keeping up the hope at times. So that's different though than knowing you know what you need to do and you're doing it. It's almost like you've said, I can't do this and hope and do everything all at the same time. I'm going to have to give some of this to God because I know I need to make these changes. I'm scared and overwhelmed with it. I'm just going to do it because I have to. I feel that I must. But you may be having trouble knowing, like, and because I'm doing it, all this amazing shit's going to happen. Like, you may be a little bit skeptical about that, even though you know that it's right, that you're making these choices. The very heart of things is the Three of Wands. So you're initiating the new. You want the new. You're done with the old. You're done with the stagnant. You have worked really hard to generate these changes for yourself. Um, you are ready to come to the table and let's go. Let's start making this newness happen. And you are um, either going to be generating all kinds of abundance for yourself as a result of doing this creative work that you've now made room for yourself to do, or somebody is going to come in and stake you, like a backer or a sponsor or a sugar daddy. You know, I don't know who it is. It's a king of pentacles. So... Just when you're kind of losing hope about, well, how am I going to make all these ideas happen? Like, I know what I want. I have a clear vision. I see where I'm going. I'm just discouraged about where's my funds? Where's my backing? Where's the community saying, yes, we want you to keep going, keep doing this, right? Like, you've hit some walls at times with your perspective and your worries. Well, the strength card here is the King of Pentacles. You have nothing to worry about. Either the work you're doing is generating this wealth for yourself or someone's going to come in and be like, I love what you're doing. Can I, can I sponsor you? Can I invest in you? Can I collaborate with you? The Three of Wands is also a, could be a creative collaborative card, right? So that's really good. The, um, your shadow side or your devil consciousness might have, be having trouble trusting the King of Pentacles here. Like you might be a little bit skeptical or he may come through in a way that you're like, do I really want to hitch my wagon to this guy? Like he, or you may not know if you're going to trust this abundance. You're just feeling, your shadow might be wanting you to play small a little bit because it's afraid of all the progress that's going to come, which can happen. That's my little bird in there. He's just suddenly decided he wants to be making all kinds of ruckus. Um, so you, your shadow here, I have the senses maybe being impacted by your discouragement or your feeling of being unsure if this stuff's really going to go down for you and wanting you to settle for less. Like I'll show you, I'll tell you an example. So I'm going through something like that personally because I've gone out on my own over the last couple of years as a therapist and as now doing also this kind of stuff. Um, I worked full time for many years, most of my career as a talk therapist, full time for an employer. And I finally started going out on my own. I'm at a crossroads now where, like I just said at the beginning, I finally cut ties to the last paid employment position I had. But there was a part of me that got really scared about that, to be real. And I ended up applying for a job that was an identical job with an identical institution that I worked for prior to making all these changes prior to the pandemic. It was a place I thought I was going to retire from. Um, a place where social workers are really well compensated and even really respected as a discipline as well, which is not always the case in the medical model. And so I applied for a job in a different, in a slightly different location than the one I had worked in, but still not that far away. And I think the reason I did it is because I'm scared to make this big leap where I'm only generating my own income. And I thought maybe there's a chance that I'll find happiness in a position like that again, in a new place with a new team, new people, not the same location. Once I sat down for the interview, though, almost immediately, I could just feel like this is a fear move. This is something that, oh my God, my ear just started ringing. So there might be something important about this for you. Um, the team even got a little bit testy with me when I backed out and I backed out for very legitimate reasons that I the boss that I would have wasn't even hired yet. There's it's a brand new team. They couldn't tell me who would be my boss or who was even applying. The new boss was on her way out. There was an interim boss, but she was pretty tight lipped about 
whether she was going to try to go on to be the main. And I just realized, like, this is backwards. I It's going backwards for me to take this job. And I needed to interview for it to see. But it's like a page of Pentacles move would have been to take that job versus knowing I am the king of Pentacles. I can generate my own success. I am the boss. That was the big thing. I was like, I don't need a boss anymore. I'm almost 51. I am the boss, basically, is what I feel like. I don't need to answer to anyone. But as you all know, if you've had a boss... A good boss can make your job meaningful and a bad boss can make it a nightmare. And I've had both and I'm not ever going back to that level of powerlessness. And I'm lucky that I'm in a field where I can go out on my own and find anyone can. You can start your own business, get your hustle on. I'm not doing anything that nobody else can do. Everybody can do what I'm doing. It's just that I decided to take the leap and I never thought I would. So the angel on your shoulder is saying everything's coming for you if you just stick with this. So you listen, or it's this is might be coming through to help you know, don't play small here. Your devil on your shoulder might be discouraging you a little bit from reaching so um, high. Is that the right phrase? High reaching, like reaching for the stars. Like you, your shadow might be trying to discourage you a little bit or get you to settle for something not quite so risk risky right but if you listen to your wisdom which is saying don't fear any of this you're generating all this abundance and divine masculine energy wheel of fortune success you're going to be blowing minds with how successful you are and the enter the direction you're headed is the empress so don't worry about any of this other in other words by following your true heart's calling like i did by realizing yeah, this would put me in a really flush with cash position again if I took this job. They want to hire me. They're interested. They're trying to check all my references and communicating with me and really friendly. Once I started to back out and say I didn't know if I felt good about taking a job where I didn't know who my boss would be, they got a little bit rude as if I wasted their time. And it's like, that's actually what I'm not doing. I'm being honest with you now that I have all the information. I'm telling you my feedback which is i'm not sure that's going to be the right setting for me them being testy with me was like just the cherry on the top right like yep this place is not for me if i have one boundary or i'm expressing one level of concern about <coughs> how power is going to play out in my own life and their response is to get testy and annoyed with me later <laughs> i don't need to work for you i've already got myself going right so it was empowering to realize that it's still scary though i you know i could lose a whole bunch of private pay clients all of a sudden and then i what would i be doing i'd be having to knock on an employer's door again maybe right so let's see about the seven of swords who's the seven of swords is it you that you're going to be getting away with the prize and all this kingly love and abundance energy creativity fortune is that you? You're going to be getting away with it at the t at a time when people maybe underestimated you. What's happening here? The Fool, the Seven of Swords, the Queen of Cups. So we have the Queen and King of Cups here, which is important. A relationship is highlighted. And the sense I have is by you making all these changes, it's impacting this relationship in some way. This is you. You are getting away with the prize. It's not somebody who's trying to... Well, it could be, actually. This Queen of Cups could be the person working against you. Who is the Queen here? No, it's you. You are, because the out, you're headed towards Empress energy and Empress status. You're also headed towards High Priestess status. So you're in alignment with your soul's calling for yourself. But you've had some anxieties like me, where maybe you start thinking, maybe I shouldn't reach so high. What if I fly too close to the sun? I've had a lot of worries too, uh, if I'm just going to be real with you, um, about who am I to shine? I've had those anxieties in my own life a lot, like wanting to stand out or wanting to be recognized for my skill felt wrong to me, like it was ego based or that I shouldn't be chasing after recognition. Well, for God's sakes, I'm a Leo. I'm designed to want to perform or be on stage in some ways and I have a Scorpio rising so that's sometimes at odds with my Leo self but there's nothing wrong with deciding to shine 
And I remember my Reiki teacher, I said that to her one time I was crying and I said, who am I to try to be special or shine or have it think I have something to offer my community or perspective or whatever. And she guided me to use the earth as, as an example. The earth isn't trying to be beautiful, it just is. If you're out in nature, it just stands in its own truth and is beautiful as a result. Like you just get to enjoy it. You just get to be there. The earth isn't fretting about, should I look good? Should I, you know, I mean, it's ridiculous. The earth just is. The earth shines. The earth allows itself to be beautiful. And it hurts us when we don't recognize the beauty of the earth, right? So that's just a way of, that might be a fear that's been in play for you. Like, I shouldn't try to stand out because that's too ego based. Well, it's maybe, you know, but sometimes if you're going to be a leader, you need a little bit of ego to have the confidence to make decisions a leader needs to make. That's the other reason I left the current position because the person in power over me is not a leader, but he has power, but he doesn't know how to lead. He lead, he's a yes man. You know, he's very much like he doesn't want to upset anyone. So he tells everyone yes. And then it creates chaos. And he, yet he's in a leadership position, right? So this is just really words to the wise here for you. You have nothing to fear. You are well on your way to your mastery. And so now I'm just going to pull here another couple oracle cards and then we'll close this up. So for you, for the eclipse energy, you just need to know that this total solar eclipse in Aries, you might be in Aries and you're going to come into your full regality, right, as an Aries. But you don't have to be. This can just be the way that you've been willing to work consciously on improving your life and your emotional landscape for yourself and finding the circumstances where you feel you're meant to grow and bloom and thrive. You're creating it. You're doing it. It's not even in question anymore. It's really going to happen is what this is showing me. So you need to not worry about it. <coughs> People are going to be wondering, how did you do it? Which comes with haters, you know, you're going to have to deal with some haters, but really, just look what you're creating for yourself. The haters, you know, whatever. I used to, uh, for a long time, there's all those songs about like backstabbing and smiling faces and all that. And I used to think, geez, what kind of world are these folks in that are singing all these songs about betrayal. Well, it's real. I've had people that I trusted for years that I'm now like, okay, I guess, I guess you didn't have that same kind of loyalty to me. I don't know. Like I'm not, it, it's just a kind of hard when you realize the truth at times, right? What else for you? The rescuer and the caregiver. So this is where you've cut cords here. You've recognized this old way that might have been codependent. Um, the first card is 41, the rescuer. But let's see here. This is probably going to list some good qualities of a rescuing personality. I don't mean to automatically assign a dark energy to this, but let's just see what it says here. If you're a healer, sometimes you have to bring in your queen of swords to defend your own energy a little bit from people that want your healing right let's see often we begin with the best of intentions when diving in to provide our assistance in the form of a rescue no matter how small it may be but could a solution unfold naturally if just given the time focus on the lesson learned in previous challenges to help you find the solutions you're seeking the rescuer has a calling to service and it is always selfless they're brave, dependable, and most of all, honorable, and they are able to set aside any inflated sense of self-worth that those who do not understand the calling sadly suffer from. Boom, that is exactly what we just said, right? You don't need to worry about haters thinking you're self-serving, or this was the other thing, because I've always been a giver. I My whole career has been about serving my community as a social worker and as a, I worked in a homeless shelter and community mental health center for my entire career. From the time I've been working, that's been my jam. Well, to go out on my own and do something purely for my own joy and fulfillment, I had a lot of demons, rescuer demons that showed up to tell me this is being selfish, this is being indulgent, 
what about being in the streets what about serving those less i mean it took me a very long time to grasp that this is a different form of serving my community and it's not selfish and by taking care of myself truly and deeply that is community care but these messages of like this is selfish you're a white lady just has the privilege to enjoy doing cards you don't have to you know it's like those are all demons i had to kind of fight against to be like yeah you do have privilege as a white woman and a card reader so what are you going to do to make sure that you don't just run away with that kind of privilege or you know so it's just interesting these are things that are important to be thinking about um and then card number 33 the caregiver very related to the rescuer right these archetypes the caregiver Making good choices is a little more important at the moment for yourself and for the projects and people under your care. Consider carefully what is bringing you contentment and serving you well and what is not and do something about it. The answer to any question should include the thought, how does this serve? The caregiver knows that support looks different for all different situations and people involved and that there is no blanket form of comfort and care. They will assess the outlook carefully and create a structure of care to suit. Really perfect. This is all harmonizing and lining up in this really beautiful way for you. So I'm just going to read one more Oracle card from Colette Baron Reed, and then that'll be it for this layout. And I'll be, oh, where did her cards go? And I'll be back um, tomorrow with the Obsidian Mirror Gaze. With some wrapping it up for you, you're headed in a really beautiful direction where you've maybe shedding this distorted sense of rescuing and caregiving that has not served you, that's been a little bit out of balance. That goes back to that Six of Pentacles at the very beginning, a recalibration of your energy, having better boundaries, not saying yes to everything, building your own security and empire for a while, right? exchanging gifts i think this means that this is bringing you into some really beautiful energy because you've been willing to challenge some of those old voices that were trying to get you to play small 27. it came in the reverse so i'm going to read the protection message be careful what you pray for because you just might get it and then realize you don't want to face the hefty price tag that comes with it. That job, that job that I applied for, it was going to be way too costly for me to take a job again with that institution. Um, you may find yourself in a situation that you've always desired, but know you will have to walk away from or even fail at it because you can't or won't pay the dues it asks of you. If you want to be a famous musician, you have to practice your craft every day. If you want to be a millionaire, you have to be responsible for managing the money and paying the taxes. Even a windfall bears a cost. It's okay, though, because spirit will help you achieve balance over time. That's Six of Pentacles. Um, <clears throat> another message here reminds you that being only the giver and not the receiver, boom, right here, caregiving and rescuing. If you can't receive, that's distorted feminine energy. Feminine energy is receptive. If you cannot receive, you block things from entering your life because you don't allow yourself to receive care and kindness and generosity from others. You may be in a power and control type vibe by tr only try or had been in the past, right? By only being able to give and care give and, you know, whatever. So sorry, let me just, I'm all lit up because this has applicability for me, definitely. Um, even a windfall bears a cost. It's okay, though, because spirit will help you achieve balance over time. Another message here reminds you that being only the giver and not the receiver plays out in many relationships in your life where you find yourself in victim mode, in a codependent dynamic, or holding on to a false sense of control. Others may push you to continue to prove yourself. The time has come to distance yourself from this kind of imbalance. Being aware of the need for both give and take is the first step to your true destiny. It's all good and getting better. 
not only can you handle this, but you can flourish as a result of it. And that's the message because the outcome energy is the Empress. The Empress is healthy, divine, feminine energy that can receive. An Empress is the embodiment of receiving, right? And so that's where you're headed. By doing this work, by realizing, I don't want to be in a codependent pattern where I'm giving out of proportion to what I receive. I don't want to be in relationships where that are one-sided, where all I'm doing is giving you know, that's not helpful to the other person either. It feels disempowering to them, right? Um, so just really beautiful energy. And again, this Moroccan heart is really coming through all of a sudden with that kind of solid, loving energy. Like the stone people are stones. Like the stone element, the earth element is receptive and it's grounded and it's stable. It's not flighty and all over the place. So this is a great you've got the real focus and determination to move forward you're making it all happen the only risk is this little desire at times to play small because you're nervous about it but just be aware you don't want to repeat being a rescuer and being over giving in this new iteration of your experience you want to be an empress energy where you're able to receive for a while this is what you're being called to do and it's good for you um so I think that's going to be it for this layout and happy total solar eclipse in Aries. Very exciting. Um, I'm curious to see how it plays out energetically. And if you feel like it, let me know in the comments how it's playing out for you. And thank you for subscribing. Thank you for being here. Thank you for your support. Thank you for bringing me to over 100 subscribers. It feels great. It's a great affirmation for me through this eclipse season that I'm on the right path. Um, so, and that I, I, my diligence is paying off for myself too, right? So thank you so much. And I think that's it for today. Ouch. Oh my God. I'm so sore from a hike I did yesterday. I'm really stiff from it. Sending you love. Thank you.